Chapter 17 For the first time since they'd arrived, Maisie was up and gone before Madison had even gotten out of bed. Annabelle was conspicuously quiet. Danica leaned against the wall behind her bed, her e-reader open in her lap, absorbed in whatever she was reading. Madison finished in the bathroom and grabbed a toaster pastry from her pack. It wasn't the healthiest breakfast in the world, but she was still mulling over Randall and what he'd shared with her the night before. He was so much deeper than she'd given him credit for, and it made him even more attractive. Any woman would be lucky to have him, which made life all the more terrifying, because other women might try to take him. The coffee maker burbled as it spat the last few drops of the rich brew into the pot, and the scent was the hallelujah chorus to her senses, touching the back of her nose and tickling her tongue. It was time to face the last full day at the Dawson Ranch. Tomorrow, she would wake up and help her friends clean the cabin before they all headed for the airport. Randall would be doing his job most of the day, and he had to talk to Luke and see how much longer he had to work before he could go off to build his own ranch. Last night, as he'd shared his dreams, they had taken root within her, too. As he'd excitedly told her about the kids with Clubfoot, she'd realized she could do that. She could train horses and help him with the kids. It could become part of her dream, all because of where she'd grown up. There was no reason she couldn't write in the evenings and help him all day. But could she spend her days with kids and Randall and write the story she used to? Her new story was fun, without all those things her agent and publishers had said she had to have in order to sell books. Danica didn't need those things to sell her books. Madison could even recreate herself as herself. Annabelle, tell me about publishing indie. Do you have an agent? Annabelle stopped brushing her long blonde hair and glanced up. No, I write the book, have it edited by a freelance editor, buy a cover from a designer, and put it up for sale. And you don't have to be near a publishing house? You can live wherever you want? Annabelle rolled her eyes. No one has to live in New York to write. Your agent is just a jerk. Most good agents don't even need to be in the same state as you. I don't have one, but I'm in talks with one to help me sell foreign and audio rights. It's totally a thing. And before you ask, yes, I make money. She flipped her hair and faced the wall, effectively cutting off conversation. Her relationship with Danica was stronger than it had been a week ago. But the others? She doubted they would ever text again. If I give up my agent, then we could do the collaboration you've wanted. Danica looked up from her reading. I still wouldn't be able to, she interjected. What I write probably wouldn't fit with your readers, and most of my readers do not venture into traditional romance. Annabelle shook her head. I gave up on the collection. It's not a big deal, and I don't have time to talk about it anyway. Simon is coming out later to take me into the library in Shady. It's really too bad I didn't spend more time on the ranch. I spent all this money to stay here and didn't really talk to a single cowboy except when I gave Randall a piece of my mind. Simon. Madison didn't know a Simon, but she suspected he was someone from town, as he wasn't one of the Dawson Creek Wranglers. Where's Maisie this morning? Strange that she's up so early. Now that she thought about it, the boxes were gone too. All three of them. She's setting up for the book signing at noon. I'm sure you can go help if you want to. Annabelle shrugged, then leaned back against her window, balancing her makeup mirror on her knees for the best light. The box with her books in it wasn't in the room anymore. So Maisie had planned to out her anyway. At least she'd already told Randall, or rather Annabelle had, so he didn't get the shock of his life. But her covers still might surprise him. After making a quick hunt of the area nearest her cabin, she searched for Randall in the ranch house. Too late, she realized Maisie had called all hands on deck to help set up her tables and get the three boxes of books laid out. Randall was, even now, putting out copies of Her Estranged Lover, one of Desiree's best-selling books, the one with little more than a man's chest on the front cover. She took a deep breath, and he turned to her as soon as she arrived at the table, showering her with a gorgeous smile that put the cover to absolute shame. Morning, beautiful. 
I didn't know you'd be doing a signing here. I didn't know I was doing a signing either. Why don't you let me do that? He stepped to the side where a giant stack of her other books waited to be arranged. Thanks for getting this started. Maisie's good at roping men into helping her. Maisie thrust a hand to her hip. I heard that, and yes, I'm very good at it. She smiled at Luke briefly, but he ignored it. The only hand missing was Brayden. I think we're good for now, boys. Thank you. She waved them off, and the three other men disappeared. Randall lingered by her side. You need anything? I know you don't like this kind of thing. She stepped into his arms and breathed deeply, absorbing his strength. She'd need it. Though this would be a tiny venue, she'd never done so much as a library signing before. Maisie cleared her throat. I had some posters made the first day we were here and put them up in Shady. My agent also had some flyers put out in nearby cities. They are hoping for a huge turnout. Not only will it be good for us, but it'll be good for the Dawson Creek Dude Ranch, too. People will want to come stay after they visited. Her heart raced and she wanted to cling to Randall, but she had to be strong. He couldn't sit by her all day. He gently ran his hand through her hair. You aren't alone. Don't worry. These people will love you. She tipped her face up to see him. I don't want to do this anymore. I wrote this way because I was told I had to. I love the adoration of my readers, but I'm so tired of hiding. I don't want to hide anymore. Can you write books under your name? His hand was so calming, she could have let him pet her hair forever. No, not like I used to. I just don't feel those stories anymore. I'm thinking of walking away from New York, from sweaty romance, into something my mother would be proud to hand to a friend. He laughed. Then I'll wait to have you sign a book for me until you publish one of those. I don't think I could handle one of those books on my nightstand. His hand stopped at her nape and he tilted her head back. His lips gently brushed hers. I'll be praying for you, and I'm not far away. You can do this. She nodded. I know I can. Now. <laughs>